I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Streaming it live, we want to say good evening also. We want you to know that the doors of this building always roll back up on welcome hinges, and you are an honored, honored guest. Uh, we want to uh, always invite you to visit with us, uh, to come and to be with us and to be a part of us. And uh, hopefully when the pandemic is over, we can all get together. It'll be a blessing. So it's good to see you. And, and uh, you, of course, always you can see us, uh, look at us on Facebook and also on, on YouTube. We had uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, my wife and I was out running errands and driving, and, uh, and so I, I think I was yet talking, she was listening. You know, we've been doing that since, since this, I guess, sweetheart weekend. I guess I say that we've been doing that since we started dating back in 82. I think we drove over the whole city of Denver, you know, and, you know, I had a car and I didn't have any money, and she had money and she didn't have a car. So it made for a perfect match. And uh, <laughs> so, so we would drive and we'd talk. And, I, I, and, you know, I can still see some of the streets of Denver and, and said that that reminds me of a B-O-O-K. I'm not going to say the word because I don't want to set her off, you know. But, she, <laughs> but we was having a conversation. She said, that reminds me of a book. And I said, oh, here we go. And so uh, I've chosen for a topic, the obstacle is the way. The obstacle is the way, and it's actually a book, and it's, uh, it, it says, the obstacle is the way, the timeless art of turning trials in what the book, what's in the book. Uh, so I, I looked at bits and pieces of it this week, but it was just something that caught my attention and was stuck in my mind, and, and, and I, I said, it's true that it's not already truth according to the word of God. I don't care who's writing it or uh, what kind of words they use, or how they turn it or twist it. If it's the truth, it's just simply the truth. And so I thought that he made a, a true statement. The obstacle, the obstacle in the path becomes the path. It's one of the statements in the book. Never forget, within every obstacle is an opportunity to improve our condition. And hopefully we'll see that as we move through the lesson. Failure shows us the way by showing us what isn't the way. Another statement I read, it says, first, see clearly, next, act correctly, finally, endure and accept the word as it is. And so there's just some statements that uh, uh, the author makes uh, from the book, but we've chosen the obstacle gets in your way that we impede never does that unless I'm talking a lot, but I, I, for some reason getting a lot of phone calls and talking and, uh, to people. And yesterday was supposed to be a day off and we had an event planned and, and so I didn't get my rest like I wanted to. So, so you know, it's one of those things that, uh, uh, that good things can impede progress of something that, that you want to do. And so when we look at uh, 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 the way it's a thoroughfare for travel or transportation from a place to place or from one place to another. The course travel, it says, from one place to another, uh, the route, if you would. So the, the obstacle that, that, that is in that, that, that's so, so large that it stops you and it seems like it's impossible to do or in your job or your occupation. You know, uh, uh, you know, you can have obstacles in marriage, like Brother Glasgow talked about for, at 9, 11 o'clock, that there are certain things in marriage. You know, you have to educate yourself. You have to learn. You have to move. I'm going that way. Which way is that? That way that John chapter 14 says that what Jesus Christ has prepared for us a place. He go to prepare for us a place. We can never forget that, that we, our way is a path that leads us to eternal life. It says, I've heard of a land of joy and peace and wonderful light. A beautiful place of mansions, fair and skies ever bright, where all who believe the Savior dear forever shall stay. And having been saved by grace, I'm going that way. Don't let the obstacles of life stop you from going the way of the cross. And don't let the obstacles become your become sin. In Genesis chapter 6 and verse 13, looking at one example, and God said to Noah, if you would, in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 13, and God said to Noah, 
The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. What is the obstacle? That he has to build a huge boat. He has to build something that he has not seen before. He had to build this thing out of gopher wood. He must make it three stories. He described it. Cabins built within and rooms. He gave him exact dimension. He had to pitch it within and without. He must make little, a little window. And, and so God wanted, in a sense, maybe wanted to know it from time to time to go up and look out of that window and see the massive destruction that was on the face of the earth. But he put a window in there. And we know windows are made to look out. And so maybe he said, wanted to know, to know after the rain stopped, we opened the window and said the sun is shining uh, above the clouds, if you would, after the rain. We made the window and the door. Let's think about it. Your task, when God come before you to save you from sin of the world, but that seemed like an impossible task. But with the wisdom and the knowledge that God had given the men of God, he was able to accomplish this. But he did not let the obstacle to, that uh, impede him from going in the way to the new land. God was going to destroy the old land and he was going to take Noah across. It. He knew that he was in the hand of God, but he did not let that obstacle of building that boat impede him from going in the way. The way is forward. The way for the church is forward, not backwards. That, that how it used to be. You know, I, can, when we, can we go back to the old way? No, we cannot. If the pandemic was gone, if we don't have to wear any mask anymore, we cannot go back. We must move forward as a church. That what, the membership of drifting away and going away? But guess what? The, the new way, it might be new members and new Christians in the way going to God. And then God says in uh, Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10, fear not. We can't forget this in the way. For I am with you. With who? With Christians, with people of God. I am with you. Be not dismayed. Don't worry. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand, my righteous right hand, God says. We cannot get the maid and get by. We look at the world today and it's just chaos everywhere. Russia and Ukraine and we have the, the pandemic and people blocking the borders and so forth and so on. But God said, don't fear. He said, I'm with you. I, I got your back, if you would. He says, remember where we are going. We are going to the eternal home that God has prepared for us. To Canaan land, I'm on my way. Isn't that what it says? Where the soul never dies. My darkest nights will turn to day. Where the soul never dies. No sad, fail, sad farewells. No tears of this life. Joseph he did not know where he was going, but he trusted in God. In Genesis chapter 37 and verse 4. Now Israel loved Joseph. That was one of his obstacles. Israel loved Joseph more than all of his children because he was a son or the child of his old age. So all of them was jealous and hated him. But we never saw Job, I mean, excuse me, no, we never saw J Joseph strike out against his brothers. Even before he got to Egypt, they ultimately sold him to the company of the Ishmaelites for what? A, 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 a few pennies or two dollars that was less than the price of a slave. And I mean, in a sense, they gave him away for pennies on a daughter. And then Potiphar's wife had obstacles. He hid that for the promise with Abraham, the man, for a promise to the family of something good for you and plan, plan for you. We cannot let the obstacle, obstacle, block us. In Genesis chapter 22 and verse 1 through chapter verses 1 through 2, now it came to pass, looking again at another example, after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here am I. Then he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you, you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I, I shall tell you. Didn't see Abraham complaining. Didn't see his wife complaining, which I was very seriously doubt he did not tell her what he was up to. But he said, my only son, my son of promise, my son also of old age that God had given him. He said, take him and sacrifice him. 
Abraham had three days to com uh, contemplate. Is this a good idea? Should I do this? Should I complain to God? Should I object? What should I do? I have to go to that. But we don't see that in the scriptures. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessings I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and the sands of the sea of the shore and the descendants shall possess the gates of the head. So Abraham, through the obstacle, he continued when he overcame the obstacle, God still provided the way in which he had promised him. So we should not we should not get dismayed when things happen in life, that things get in our way. Things that we wake up on Monday morning, we get a phone call, uh, we get up and I'm not feeling well, the wife is not feeling well. And, you know, th things happen. But we should always rely and depend on God. We should know who we are and we should know who it is that we serve. Moses was a meek man, the meekest man, it says. It says of Moses that he was the meekest and most humble man on the face of the earth. Numbers chapter 12 and verse 3. But that doesn't mean he was weak. Meekness is not weakness, but strength under control. Moses was meek. By faith, it says, Moses, when he was grown, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He had been raised in Pharaoh's household, educated by Pharaoh, uh, 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 sheltered by Pharaoh, uh, 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 clothed by Pharaoh. But when he was grown, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. So he had some things to overcome. He had to give up his livelihood so that he can go on and uh, with this obstacle and do that which God had determined that he wanted him to do. Afterward, Moses and Aaron went into and told Pharaoh, thus says the Lord, the same Pharaoh that Moses had thought that well, since he killed the Egyptian, then this thing surely came to the ears of Pharaoh. So, so what? I'm going to flee out of Egypt. But during his fleeing and going down and, 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 and marrying and having children, that what God told him, now you got to go back to this very, very man that you fled from and go down and tell him and stand before the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and tell him, say what? Let my people go. That, that, that what? That's an obstacle. And Moses made a lot of excuses for a while, didn't he? Oh, no. And so, but, but yet and still, when Moses overcame his obstacles, then he went on in the way that God had for him and led the children of Israel out of Egypt. Then 1 Samuel chapter 15, Saul, in the story of Saul and, and, and King Agag, Saul spared King Agag. Saul got a problem. Saul could not overcome his obstacles. He let his obstacles get the best of him. When God told him to do something, he did not do it. When God told him specifics, he left out some of the details. God said destroy all, and what he did, he left some alive. So he, what? He, he let his obstacle become sin. So he spared the, the king of Agag in, in 1 Samuel chapter 15. Saul re, was rejected as being king because he did that. And then what? Samuel went down and, and anointed David as king. And I thought it was interesting that David, David is king when he went in, when the evil spirit came upon Saul and they called, called David in and David played and the evil spirit would leave him. David was already the anointed king as he stood before Saul. Matter of fact, King David that was anointed king that had not been appointed king, it was King David that went and slew, De uh, slew uh, 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 Goliath. He was already anointed king. I don't think he knew what God had chosen him for. And I'm sure Saul did not know that David had already been anointed king because Samuel said, if Saul found this out, he will kill me. So, but David did not let obstacles get in his pursuit or to serve God. He said, where is this uncircumcised Philistine that defied the army, circumcised Philistine, this world full of sin? Where is it? I can face it because what? I know whom I serve. I know who my God is. And what did David say? He says, look, I'm your servant, Saul. I have killed both the lion 
and the bear and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, going to be. And when, and when he was, when it came, when David was being anointed king, his brother was saying, no, no, he, he's out there with those little sheep. And but well, what? When David was out there in those little sheep, in that darkness alone, he was learning some valuable skills that his back had stopped them in their trail. David, a man after God's own heart. And this, I found this to be comforting. It said the Bible tells the story of men and women and don't paint a rosy picture. He, they give us the whole story, not like sometimes we, we, we see uh, celebrities and, and that they write books about and tell stories about and we see movies about. They, 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 sometimes they give you all the good stuff. But God doesn't do that. He, he, he doesn't paint just a rosy picture. The Bible gives us all there is about their, what they have done, both the warts and all. It's found in the scriptures. Maybe the fact that the Bible is transparent gives us sinners who still struggle every day some hope. Isn't that good? So what God said, so no, look at the men of God. That is the example that is written in the scripture. And sometimes we forget that. That we, we let sin, the obstacle of sin, stop us. When God says, no, just come to me. You can repent. I will forgive you. I will help you. And I will set you back on your feet and put you back in the way. David committed adultery conspiracy to commit murder and then premeditated murder yet God calls him a man after his own car because it was said of him he will do everything I want him to do Acts chapter 13 and verse 22 David did what God wanted him to do and David did some things that he wanted to do but he did all they can be confident look at what Psalms chapter 23 and verse 4 that we can't forget this what David wrote even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil. He did not fear before Goliath. He didn't fear when his, his son Absalom was chasing him all across the country. He didn't fear when what? When Saul was after him. What? David said, well, I will, in the shadow, I will fear no evil for God, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comforted me. When, thing, when, 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 when life seems impossible, lean on God. Lean on Jesus Christ. And then there was Joshua. Moses, my servant, is dead, it says in Joshua chapter one. So what they, to hear Joshua has to take over all that Moses was doing. Now, therefore, he said, arise, go over this Jordan. That is an obstacle. It's a big river and he's got to figure out I've got to cross it. You and all this people to the land which I am given the children of Israel. Rahab hides the spies. Rahab, uh, the second generation, was circumcised. Yes, the, and then the destruction of Jerusalem and then his defeat uh, at Ai. So Joshua was doing good. And to Joshua, what? Say so what? When he, Joshua was defeated, when you are defeated, we might want to look at our lives and say, what have I, what have I done? You know what? Joshua failed to do that. And God told him, said, no, you, get up from praying. He says, Israel has sinned. They had let an obstacle get in their way and you need to fix it. He said, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Isn't that, isn't that what God tell us to do? Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. A Christian is different from a person of the world. We should do that. We can do the things that the world finds that they are afraid of, that they say think are impossible. Joshua chapter 14 and verse 11. As yet I am as strong this day. Talking about Caleb. Talking about Caleb. Caleb said, look, I am as strong at this day as on the day that Moses sent me. You know, sometimes you just speaking of obstacles. We should not let age become an obstacle. You know, we're going to age. We're going to get older, but we don't have to let our bodies fail. We can work on these bodies. It won't be as strong as it used to do. But one thing I often think about is that that I thank God that my wife forces me to run every day and forces me to drink that green stuff called Nutribullet. Well, both of them I did not want to do at the beginning, but it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. 
And I thank God every day for it, to not have it at 62, that have not to, be, to take medications. And, and, you know, don't have to make frequent trips to the doctor. She would keep reminding me, you need to go get a checkup. And it's like, okay, I'm going to get one. But, you know, so, so we should think about that, that, that we should try to keep our bodies, as we age, we should try to keep our bodies as strong and as healthy as possible. As Caleb said, he said what? He said, I'm still as strong as the day as Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Isn't that a blessing? An old man telling these young folks, say, look, I'm ready to fight. Let's, and look what he said. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out and out of the land. What lie? God killed them off. So we should we should stay close to God. We should not let the obstacle get in the way. First John chapter five and verse four says from the ESV, our faith, the faith that we hear, the faith that we read about, the faith that we should have. We know what it says. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then Romans chapter eight and verse 28 says, according to his purpose. So say what? We are called as Christians. We have heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have repented ourselves. We have been baptized. God has added us to the church. We are, and we don't want to leave without mentioning the man, the righteous man, Job. There was a man that says in the land of us, who name was Job? And that man was blameless. He was upright and one who feared God and shunned evil. So we can't. God had departed from him. Why? Because he had sinned. He let the obstacle of those women get to it. But he gave in. He gave in. Job so suffered so much and for no reason that he could see, but he still said, losing all your belongings, everything you have, and then still say, the Lord gives and the Lord take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job chapter 1 and verse 21. And I know, up and a fire start and burn up everything I had. We should be able to do that. Job did. Job did. Other kings, I'm going to do the same thing to Luke. Well, look what I've done. But guess what? And put and, and died. Daniel was taken down to to Babylon and he was from the elite for, uh, house, I think, on the two kings or three kings, I believe. But he had interpreted their dreams. But yet and still, they set him up. They said what? Daniel went up three times a day. And he bowed himself and prayed toward uh, to, to Jerusalem. We should know exactly when we're going to pray. We should know when we're going to study. We should know why we are praying, who we are praying to. And, and, and so, but what, what? That caused Daniel to be thrown into the lion's den. But guess what? Da Daniel said, I'd rather be eating lions. They were not hungry, but they was hungry when, uh, when uh, they threw the, 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 the servants in, that had captured them, threw them in there. They were hungry then. So, so we, we, we could learn from those things become our defeat. We have to face life and go forward in life and do those things that God wants us to do. And, you know, we could talk about men like Elijah and I, what? She killed off all the prophets. Now I alone and left. And God said, oh, no. Oh, no. God said, I have 7,000 prophets that have nothing right along beside you. And just because you don't know it, don't mean that they're not working. And you sometimes, you see, I saw some beautiful, I saw some sisters passing out baskets today. And it's like, what are they doing? They was passing out baskets, I suppose, to the seat. So that's a good thing. And last night, and us young folks, I'm like, I don't know how to work that. Don't let age and knowledge defeat you. We will show you how to do it. But sister, my, she ain't be able to function <laughs> on Zoom. So we, th we appreciate that. That was encouraging, uh, encouragement for me to see them there with us. So the obstacle in the way, but they didn't let that obstacle defeat them. And then, of course, Jesus Christ at the cross. He I will, but as your will. Jesus Christ faced the obstacle of death because he what? He had given up heaven. He had relinquished all that he has. And the only way to regain it, he had to go and die on the cross. And so that is where the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached, the gospel that we must obey. We know that Philip, when he went down uh, to Samaria, he therefore he went down and all those that were scattered everywhere. But where, where Christians go, 
they preach the gospel. When you go on your jobs, when you go to school, when you're in your neighborhood, wherever you are, we should be scattered from here and we should go preaching the gospel, the word of Jesus Christ. And Philip went down there and he did Samaria and he preached. And the multitude with one accord, they heed, they paid attention to what he was preaching and the things uh, spoken by Philip, they was hearing and seeing the miracles that he done. And women were baptized. And so we encourage you, and if you're a Christian, we encourage you that you have sinned. Don't let that sin be an obstacle to you, obstacle to you. Repent so that God can put, set you back on the path, on the way. And if you have not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, we encourage you to do that. We will teach you and we will show you and we will baptize you and Jesus Christ will add you to his church. And all of us, as we, as we, after we have become Christians, we must live faithful unto death. So if we have any here that want to obey the gospel, if we have any here that want to make a confession, we will give you the opportunity to do so as we stand and sing the selected song. Oh, do, do not let the word depart and close thine eyes against the light for sinner, harden not thy heart.